Hello and welcome back to a new Unity, I mean Visual Studio tutorial. Apologies. So in this tutorial, what we're going to do is continue working with our game section of it and make our inventories and add some more items better, or the other way around. But yeah, so so far we've got to click submit main menu, click game. We've got our character. So using the WASD, we can collect the apples. So what I want to do is, before 10 minutes hopefully, is make it so we can collect a another type of fruit, maybe add an enemy which takes your any health down, which is really simple, and then make a script in which you can delete the objects in here, because you can add them but you can't delete them, but the script's really easy. So what we're going to start by doing is simply going to Photoshop and I'm going to open, well you could go Photoshop, paint anything you want and I'm just going to open the apple what we had. So you may have been wondering why we opened the apple and the simply is because it's got all the right dimensions we need in order to develop the next fruit. So obviously last time I said a banana so I'm going to develop a banana. So bring my brush right down and you're about to see the best drawing in the entire world literally you will be jealous right now. So what I'm going to do is create a new layer or just draw your fruit basically. So I'm going to go from here, maybe a little half circle, apologies for that, and then come back down and then there. Yeah. And then I'm going to colour it in yellow. In fact, I'll duplicate that layer. And then on the bottom layer, I'll colour it all in yellow. So there's probably a better, better way to do this, but hey, I'm not the best artist in the world. I wish I was. I want to draw, but still. So colour it in, put the top one back on. That looks awful. So instead, I'll just leave it at that. That looks like a goodish banana. Put it right there, delete the apple. There's my banana. Admit it, you're all jealous right now. And then what you can do is save it as a separate file. So I saved it as a PNG because of transparency. So we'll save it as bah nah nah. Save. You could go as far as doing whatever you want, but now what I'm going to do is actually delete that again because we don't need it. And what I'm actually going to do, because I can't zoom in anymore, so I'll do that, um, is we're going to make an enemy because we need an enemy. So our enemy is going to be so deadly cool that it's going to be a circle. Look at that evil enemy. Yes, so I'm going to add a outline to him. I'll do. Just so he scares you even more. Admit it, you're having nightmares now. Anyway, so I'll go back out of my food folder and I'm actually going to stick it into a entities folder. And in here we'll call it enemy01. And we'll save it as a PNG again and save. Okay. So there's our deadly enemy. Admit it, you're all scared now. So we can go back to C-Sharp and we actually need to import it here. So if you remember, we did this simply by going to a picture box. So I'm going to copy Apple 03 and paste it here. We'll put a banana here. And we'll call it, uh, we called it Apple 03, so we'll call it Banana 01. And then change the image of it to A, import, oh dear. There we go, so it put me in the completely wrong place. So food, oops, oh no, I didn't undo. There we go, food and banana. And then while we're here, we may as well import the enemy. So entities, enemy. Click the banana, there we go. I know I said banana, I just like saying ba banana. But change the tag from apple to banana, otherwise you'll get mistakes. So there's my banana now. It looks amazing, admit it. Right, so next we need to copy this banana and add our enemy. So of course we're going to call it uh, enemy01. Change the tag to enemy and here choose name and enemy. So a few people didn't quite understand what the tag was for. Um, because you can't have two objects named the same in that case, if you wanted collisions from both, or you wanted to add it to the inventory, say for the apples, you'd have to do one for Apple 1, Apple 2, Apple 3, and then imagine an entire game, Apple 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, you could have thousands. Whereas if it, the tag's just Apple, 
it's got a overall name if you wish so it's easier to do so I'll put our enemy right there at the moment that's not going to hurt us or anything but the banana needs to be collected I guarantee you're going to be saying banana after this tutorial but anyway so we're going to go into our game here and scroll up to our collisions I've lost my mouse okay apparently my mouse hides when I don't zoom in that's a bit weird but okay so we're going to copy this if statement and paste it below so else if player intersects dot with banana 01 Oops. so if it intersects with 01 bounds add to inventory banana that's it literally I'll collect the banana now let's try it so zoom out okay don't zoom out then uh, where's it gone? There we are. So game. So there's a banana. So let's collect an apple. Let's collect the banana. There we go. So let's collect the apple. And then we should be able to see that it'll just keep going up. Boom. Easy, right? So, really simple. So the next step what we can do is actually... No, my mouse is still hiding. Great. So, we've got the banana working. And the reason we actually use this else if system here, okay, zoom in again, else if is because if we collect one item and they were all if statements, it will go, is the item named Apple 1? No. Is it named Apple 2? No. Is it named Apple 3? No. Is it named Banana? Yes. So it checks every single if statement. And say we collected Apple 2, it would go, is it Apple 1? No. Is it Apple 2? Yes. Is it Apple 3? No. Is it Apple is it banana one? No, because it's already found it. So the else if statement will skip every single one until it finds it. Yes, if you got if you click the banana, it's got to go through everything, but it's a lot quicker and saves on processing power than putting them all manually. So, next step is to make our enemy hurt us. Kind of. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is in our collisions, so food. You notice how we tagged it out, we can go down a couple of lines and here type enemies. So in here we simply paste again um, this line, get rid of the else if, because we don't need that one. Well we could actually, we'll put it back in because it will join onto there. It doesn't matter about the notes being in between. So if player.intersects.bounds with enemy 01, then we need to minus the player's life here. So what we could do is make a new function. So public void lose health and do you remember how we use parameters there well if what we're going to do is specify an integer parameter in here so int lose and what we can do is in there when we call lose health we can actually specify how much health would needs to be taken so enemy 1 might deal 2 health whereas enemy 10 might give you a good 20 health nah, whack. so what we can do is come back up to life and where lose life is minus 10 we can copy it go down and paste it in here so if life.value is more than lose so say if we lose 10 it'll check if it's more than 10 then minus 10 but if it's 2 it'll check if it's more than 2 because if it's not then it's going to go into minus and then we'll get an error so now all we do is call lose health so we'll make him minus you 10 so you lose 10 health. That simple. Let's try that again. So we walk up. And when we hit it, ow. But the only thing we've got to work on yet, which I've still got to figure out how to do, is every time we try to move, it will damage us. And then when we get to the bottom, it won't damage us no more. But then we can collect some apples. And now what we need to do probably not now next tutorial is when you click on it it goes health 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 really simple to do I'm just gonna double check everything but yep so that should be it and um, the only thing I want to do is take take away from the inventory which is really simple too so where we've got add to inventory here we can come down and we can go public void take what did we call it? From. Okay. So take from IMV and we copied the parameter as well, which is the picture box. So when we come up, 
it co copies the item which we want, whereas instead of this, we couldn't, well, we could, we could specify which picture box we want to take it from. So, whenever we click on the picture box here, we just transfer it across. For example, if we double click this picture box, it comes up with IMV01, click. And then in this one inventory, we can type if uh, sender, sender is the object which we sent, so it should be IMV01. So if sender dot, okay, guess not. And um, we have to convert it to a picture box if anything, but we'll not do that. So we'll just type here if IMV01 dot image does not equal null. So basically, if this it, it picture box isn't hasn't got anything in it. I mean, if it has got something in it, if we didn't want it to say if it hasn't, we'd put two equals. Null means absolutely nothing. It's blank. No image, no blank image, nothing. I told you, we, we're going to get rid of that. We'll do it next time. Oh, I can zoom in. I didn't know that. So, yeah, so we've got the partially everything done. We've got the enemy. We've got the apples, which looks a lot like the enemy. We will change one of them soon. We've got the banana, we've got the character, of course we need a character. So what we're going to do is when we click one of these inventories, when we have an object in it, like a fruit, um, a key, something, it checks where it is, then it runs the take from IMV code, and then it gives us health. We can already lose health. Then we can make a load screen, lose screen, stuff like that. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked it. Please hit the thumbs up if you did. If you made it this far, please comment with this word. Banana. You can obviously just spell it correctly. Just put banana. But yeah, so then we'll be able to see how far people got. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.